appearance of a work or is there a deeper meaning? And what is the common thread connecting all art? Arts Thread, an East Carolina production. Hello and welcome to Arts Thread, the show where we explore different interpretations of art and how they all connect together. I'm your host, Joelle Banjo Johnson. Joining us today we have Dr. Kevin Moore, a professor at here, East Carolina University, at the School of Music. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Happy to be here. Thank you. So let's get started. First, tell us about who you are and what exactly that you do. I uh, teach music history largely at uh, East Carolina in the School of Music. I also am the director of the Medieval and Renaissance Studies program, which gives me an opportunity to uh, have interactions with people across the board uh, in school, in arts and sciences, uh, fine arts communication, uh, English department, foreign languages department, art department. Uh, uh, philosophy department, it's great, and we do a lot of stuff, including concerts. Oh, wow, big, broad, broad range of things right there. We try to keep busy, yes. And what is Renaissance music? Uh, that's a good question, actually. Some people don't believe in the Renaissance anymore. I still believe in the Renaissance. Essentially, uh, if, you're, if, you're study, if you're studying music history, they talk about art historical periods. They talk about okay. the medieval period, they talk about the Renaissance period, and then they talk about the Baroque period. Those are the three that are contiguous uh, between the early times after the fall of the Roman Empire and about 1750, okay? So we won't even talk about the later ones. The Renaissance is in the middle of that, uh, and uh, essentially Renaiss the Renaissance is a time uh, when there's a great interest in, uh, in uh, ancient times is being uh, is rediscovered. Okay. Uh, they talk about the Italian Renaissance, but there's also a Northern Renaissance. Uh, the Italian Renaissance is the one everybody talks about, but the Northern Renaissance is where the music is coming from. The music in this period is largely coming from the North. It's coming from the Franco-Flemish lands. Okay. It's coming from England, and it's coming from, from France, not so much from Italy until later. Uh, so the, it's a difficult concept because the Renaissance implies that you want to go back to ancient times, but in fact the music doesn't really do this until later. So okay. we have to find other ways to, to get at the Renaissance in music. All right, well we actually have a segment of that, so let's take a look at the music.
Okay, very impressive. What elements make up Renaissance music? The, the instruments, mm -hmm. um, the people involved, what elements make that up? Renaissance music is a lot of things. Uh, essentially, you have to look at it as there's, there's, there's two spheres. There's secular music, worldly music, and there's sacred music. Okay. Now, sacred music was much bigger back then than it is now. Uh, and sacred music is really the core, I would say, of Renaissance music. But there's plenty of secular music, too. So sacred music consists of music that's sung in the church as part of the service. And this goes all the way back to plain chant, Gregorian chant mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of the ancient times. Okay, There's a lot of continuity between the medieval music and the Renaissance music. It's not anything that's brand new. Uh, one thing that people don't understand about Renaissance music is it's very largely vocal. Okay. Uh, the orchestras didn't exist as we understand them. Instruments existed, yes, but nothing like the orchestras that we know. Uh, there's no symphonies being uh, done at this time. The genres are all based, the musical genres are all based on uh, essentially either church type music or, uh, or laudatory type music. Uh, these things are called motets. Okay. Uh, and these, this is largely sacred. And then there was a lot of love songs going mm -hmm. on at this time. Now this goes back to the troubadours. The troubadours are, are in the 12th century and they write a lot of music for just a single voice line, just what's called monophonic music. Okay. Now in the 14th century, they started making harmonizations of these pieces. So instead of just one voice, it's now three voices and wow. four voices. Okay, then the Renaissance picks up on that, and um, I mean, I have an opinion that the Renaissance is the first, uh, the music of the 15th century, which is the music that we're listening to, by the way, is okay. the first truly mature musical style in the history of music. Wow. And it stands comparison with anything that came later. Oh, really? Okay. So how, would, how has re that Renaissance music, how has it evolved to the music that's today? Well, that's another good question, and of course, this is what we teach our courses about. Right. Well, the, the, big, the big difference is that the Renaissance music is what is called polyphonic, okay. meaning that it has, it's very linear in its orientation, and it's all vocal. And, and not that they didn't right. use instruments, because they did, but, they mo but the church music it was typically performed just a cappella with no instruments involved. And the idea is that there's three or four or five or six voice lines going on at the same time. Okay, now this lends a, a, a real complexity to the music, but, it, uh, but what, what it does is it maximizes the, the interaction between the linear and the melodic and the mm. harmonic. And they had their own set of standards for creating harmonies that were different and much more uh, linear than, than what's in place today. For example, in jazz, you've got a guy playing the saxophone and he's right. playing the melody, and then you've got a guy playing piano and guitar and a bass line, and, but it's all very harmonically oriented in terms of what we call vertical harmonies, just chords being played. Right. Okay? That's, that's not the case in this earlier music. It's all, uh, it's all based on the way the lines are flowing and the harmonies coming out of that. So it's very different. Now the big break point is around 1600 where the, all this modern stuff comes into play around 1600. The, the accompaniment through chords right. and the instrumentalization of music, that all starts around 1600 and we have a lot of continuity after that. And then in the 20th century, as my students always know, I say, all bets are off in the 20th century. <laughs> Anything goes in the 20th century. And of course, the, actually what happens is, in some ways, the conservative aspects of music are actually taken over by pop music in the 20th century. Harmony in so-called serious music in the 20th century gets completely, I think you could say nutso, <laughs> uh, whereas in, in pop music it's more traditional. The pop music in some ways is more traditional uh, than the, than the so-called classical music or serious music of the 20th century. How so? Well, because, th because th they've already done that in classical music and they've got to go somewhere else. So you get people doing all kinds of crazy things and making up all kinds of crazy uh, new techniques that are like, you know, well, you can't use chords anymore. There's right. none allowed, you know, that kind of thing. So besides the, uh, obviously, Renaissance music is, has made a great impact on the music that we listen to today. Um, has it made an impact on the artistic community as far as relating to other forms of um, other forms of music and other forms of art? Are you talking about Renaissance music the way it's viewed today? The way it's viewed today, yes. 
Uh, well, it hasn't made the impact that I would like, unfortunately. I do think that the Renaissance music is one of the great undiscovered treasures uh, of, uh, of, um, uh, of music that, that has not, you know, everybody knows Beethoven, everybody knows Mozart, right. and people are discovering Bach. Uh, but nobody knows these composers from back then. I mean, Gombert and Dufay and and uh, Eine van Giesegem and Pierre de la Rue. Nobody's ever heard of these guys, but it's great music. Now, I wouldn't say that Renaissance music has made much of an impact on modern art or uh, or music, except in some limited cases. Um, it, it's it's just we've gone through too many changes. And uh, I would say it did maintain an impact, a pretty significant impact, all the way through about Mozart's day. Okay. Because the idea is that polyphony, the use of multiple voice lines, was always a possibility, but it wasn't the main possibility after 1600. But somebody like Mozart knows how to do this and mm -hmm. will do it. And Mozart wrote a lot of sacred music. Uh, and so it, it maintained its viability there, and the use of polyphony kind of uh, kind of signaled a kind of a renaissance mentality, but I'm not sure that you can say in these last couple hundred years that it's been much, except that a few 20th century composers have experimented with, uh, with uh, neo-renaissance mm -hmm. styles, but unfortunately it hasn't made the kind of impact that I would like. Is there a connection between uh, renaissance music and other forms of art? There is at the time, absolutely there is. Uh, the thing, well, again, we have to go back to the sacred versus secular, right. okay? The secular music is all based on love songs. And they're beautiful love songs. They're beautiful poems, uh, and they're beautiful, um, they're beautiful harmonies that go with them. I mean, it's, it's extremely gorgeous stuff, uh, a lot of it. And it's, so the, there's a direct connection with literature there. I mean, it's absolutely okay. direct. They're taking poems from poets like Christine de Pizan, other famous poets of the time. Now, as far as the art is concerned, I think you can make some pretty strong cases there. I actually did a study about this uh, where I was trying to show, uh, I delved into this one piece from about 1470 by a guy named Regis, a composer named Regis, and I was trying to show how his use of uh, repeated material, it's repeated in a very subtle way in between the movements of this mass. Mm. And so I was trying to get at what that was all about, and then I realized that he's trying to express a kind of a mystical, a mystical connection here. Mm. Then I started reading these art history books, and I realized that the art historian, the, the artists are doing exactly the same, the same thing. thing. And so there's a, there are definite connections between the art and the music. And the art, much of the art of the time shows a p pictures of the interiors of cathedrals, et cetera, yeah. uh, you know. And the music, of course, is sung in those very cathedrals. And, uh, and sometimes they'll show, there's a famous picture by uh, Jan van Eyck, the, uh, one of the altarpieces, uh, that shows the, all these angels singing. You know, and then it's just, it, it, there's, 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 there's a panel that shows angels, about eight female angels, by the way, <laughs> singing, and uh, it's, it's beautiful. And uh, it, there's, there's a lot of instruments being played in this, and uh, so there's no question that there's a lot of interconnections between music and art. So with all these different influences, how would you define, how would you define the, the art of the music? I mean, again, it's coming from you said the secular and then the sacred, mm -hmm. but is, is there a set definition for it? How would you define um, this art form? I would define it as a, as a, uh, a, a technical means of expression uh, that is there to edify the soul. That's okay. what I, how I would define it. And I would define art in general as being something that is more than mere entertainment. Uh, art is something that means that should mean more to the individual than mere entertainment. It lasts. Art lasts. There's a famous classical quote. Uh, 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 what is it? Uh, Ars longa vita brevis. Art, art is long. Life is short. <laughs> I do agree with that one. And that's what Renaissance music is. Okay. And again, it's what we know. Art, art is, is art lasts. Art lasts. What is it about Renaissance music that makes it so special that it's, it, it will last more than other forms of music? Because you said, you know, the, um, it's, it's still here, the elements mm -hmm. of pop culture, it's, it's still here, mm -hmm. but we're just unknown to that. 
So what, what makes it special that it's, it's going to make it last? Okay. Uh, what makes it special is that no other music in the history of music combines the melodic and the harmonic aspects okay. of music more successfully, bar none. Okay? And the other thing about this music is it is extremely pure. Now, people say, okay, well, it doesn't have the you know, tone color variations of the symphonies. And don't get me wrong, I love the symphonies. I love Schumann. Yeah. I love all that stuff in the 19th century. I mean, I'm a bass player. I play this stuff on a regular basis. I love that music. But nothing exceeds the purity of the 15th century style. Mm. Uh, and the 16th century, too. But you know, I'm kind of prejudiced in favor of the 15th <laughs> century, actually. Don't blame you on that one. Um, what do you... How do you express this to your students? I mean, when they're, is, is there a, a method or a style that they can be taught in the Renaissance music? Like, is there, you know, every artist, an artist is defined by what they do and, mm -hmm. you know, how they choose to express themselves. So in, in this music, is there an art form of expression? Is there a way that the students um, can express themselves through the music? And so how do you relate that to your students? How do you teach them that? Okay, how to now make it their own. You're saying when they perform it. Right, how, like when they're, when they're doing, they're actually performing a piece from that time or the piece from the, the Renaissance music. Okay, so how, do the st how can you get your students to express themselves through the music? Right, can they make it their own? Yeah, they can, sure they can. It depends on the kind of music, again. Uh, you know, you have to remember that in, in the Western music, the authority of the composer is pretty strong. Right, And course. that was already in place at this time. Now, but there is a fascinating, uh, the problem is that you need a lot of, you need a lot of uh, knowledge and technique in order to be even, even able to approach this music. However, there is a theorist, uh, several theorists, but one in particular in, who's writing right at this very time, the 1470s, and he keeps talking about, uh, in his treatise, his name is Tinctoris, he writes, uh, he keeps referring to cantare super librum, singing over the book. Okay. Now, it's clear that this refers to improvisation. It, 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 it refers to polyphonic improvisation. There is a lot of opportunity for polyphonic improvisation in this music. Um, so that's one way to do it, but the problem with that is you have to have a lot of background before you. I have actually worked with that with students a little bit, right. but by the time, it's kind of like a you know, college football. You have to go through a new crop of students every four years, so you don't have that much continuity. But you could do that. Another thing is in the secular music, there's a lot more probably a lot more uh, latitude for improvisation in, say, you know, embellishing the vocal lines, for right. example, in the, in the performance of the chansons, the, the secular songs. Uh, in, uh, there is some in the other music, but you have to remember that there's normally more than one on a part, and so you've got to be careful of the improvisation okay. there. But the, uh, clearly, you, there are ways in which you can get at the music I would say mostly within the realm of secular song is where you're going to get the most amount of expression. Okay. But don't forget, somebody has to conduct it, somebody has to prepare it. Of course. There is plenty of latitude for uh, creativity, uh, but it has to be tempered with understanding in those areas. But it takes a lot of training before you can it. do that. Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate you being on the show today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. That concludes our show. Tune in next time.